Hello, everybody. I'm Nick Turner. How are you doing? Excellent. Everybody feeling good after a nice lunch? Yeah? No, nobody falling asleep, please. If I catch you snoring, I'll right, have you standing up and doing jumping jacks. Uh, so yeah, my name is Nick Turner. I work for Echohow, and I would like to spend the next 30 minutes talking to you about Echohow report templates. And this is not necessarily a, you know, a I suppose it is a vendor-specific presentation, but as a, coming from being a customer of Echohow's, I really enjoyed using report templates. I've presented on them before, but I tried to cram it into a 10-minute talk, and I found myself running out of time towards the end, so this time I thought I'd drag it out a little bit longer and spend 30 minutes. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> so, so hopefully some people in here would like to hear about that. Um, so, if uh, just quick show of hands, does, could you put your hands up if you currently use Echohow report templates in your workflow? Okay, and anyone here who's tried to use it but then been scared off because it looks a little, looks too complicated? Okay, a couple. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so hopefully what I will do today is just break some of that and encourage you to get out there and experiment with it and try and break it, okay? So here's my, here's my starting slide and uh, how to find me. If you want to talk to me about report templates, come, come and do so. Uh, also, I have a blog, but also nick at echohow.com. Drop me an email. We can have a conversation about report templates. So for this demonstration, we're going to use a fictional survey, well, a real survey, but a fictional name uh, of a place called Badger Key. And uh, <clears throat> so this is, a, this is real world survey data. And we have a project. Let's just double check that this is real. So we'll switch on the survey paths. You can see that, yep, somebody did walk these, these areas. And we have how many APs? We've got 10 APs. Very nice trick earlier, Fernay, really enjoyed that one. So project locate <laughs> surveyed access points. That was excellent, yeah, I enjoyed that. So um, that's, <laughs> that's why we only have those APs appearing on this map at the moment. So we'll tidy this up, we'll switch off the survey paths, and let's also switch off the APs for the moment. So this is what I want to put in my report. I'm going to go to reporting, template reporting, and copy current visualizations template tag to clipboard. Hop over to Word, and then we'll change our view back to this one here. And then just a simple paste, and we can see the tags that make up this visualization. So let's test this. So we'll save this one, save this document on the desktop. Templates, and then we'll run this. So that one there was just uh, the same as going reporting, template reporting, generate reports, and then we choose the template that we would like to use, and we're using a very simple, te simple template first of all, this one here. And that'll come out, and the, the output will be placed on the desktop, and we'll run that. Everybody with me so far? Excellent. And so we should end up with a visualization. And by default, what's going to happen here is that image is going to be filling the page. We can add, we can add tags to that visualization to start altering the dimensions, so the height or the width of the visualization. I'm not going to focus in on that right now. So what I wanted to do first is describe to you a scenario which I've had where the end customer really wanted to see per AP heat maps. So yeah, this is, this is good. This shows me the overall coverage. There's room for improvement in this design, evidently. But this is not really about the design. This is about getting that information out of an Echohow project. So the customer wants to see per AP heat maps. And manually, that's a painful, long task to do, because I have to select each AP and then pull that image out, and et cetera, et cetera. So with report templates, we can speed that process up by creating an AP loop. And that will then iterate through each AP that meets a certain criteria. And so for this, I think I will show you the template that we're going to use, and then we will run that one. So. So we're going to add a simple loop, 
And very simple, very, very simply, we will just add loop start type APs at the top. Then everything within that loop is going to get iterated through. And then at the end, loop end type APs. OK, so let's try that on this, on this project. So head over to here. OK, now did we, did we still have Word open? Yeah, we do, but be careful. Uh, we don't want to have that. We don't have the output open. One thing that can happen is if you have the, if you have the output that Echo has generated open, and then you run another template, that document will open, but it will still be the old version. So make sure you close the output document each time you're running a new template. And so I will right, we'll check this one out. Yep, that's fine. We can overwrite that. <clears throat> ah. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, and it says, please check the log for details. Now, I did check the log for details, and there wasn't so much. Uh, there wasn't so much going on in there. So, what I will do is just explain to you why that one failed. Uh, <laughs> we'll quickly call time. But basically, that one failed because APs isn't at a high, isn't at a level of the hierarchy that we can loop through by itself. The APs live within floors. So in order to fix that particular problem, I need to do a floor loop and then the AP loop. OK, so that's not cl super clearly documented. Is that something that maybe I need to fix? Um, it's not clearly documented, not even super. No, 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 no. It's, it's not, not super clear. It's not clear. It's not clear. But I wanted to just highlight, because in preparation for this presentation, I did this, and it happened, and I, you know, that's a good start. So, <laughs> so right, now we'll go. Back to the Echo magic. Um, we need to fix that template by putting a floor loop in above and below my AP loop. Okay? And that looks more like this. And by the way, I don't sit here and or stand here and type these from scratch. There is there are lots of example documents available. You can get them. In fact, you have some installed on your computer already if you have Echo installed in my documents and report templates. There are more available on the Echo House support page. And also, that was this link that we saw up here. I have a shared Google Drive folder, which you can get to with bit.ly slash report templates. And they're all there for you to download and pull apart and, and break and copy and paste. So basically, copy and paste is your friend with report templates. I don't sit here. I don't stand here and create them and type them out from scratch. I'm always borrowing from the one-click report template. <clears throat> so we're going to try this one. We're going to go, we're going to loop start type floors, and then within that, loop start type APs. Then we're going to run our visualization, and then we'll close the AP loop and close the floor loop. And I would run this right now, but it's, it'll take a little bit of time because I think there are 132 APs in this project file. So I've already prepared the outputs for you. And you have to just take my word that I haven't doctored these, OK? But that's what I get. Per AP, a heat map. So some of them not super, not, not very useful here because on our map, maybe they were 2.4 gig only APs. And if we look at the text that we're using here, my visualization is filtering out to only, dim only illustrate the 5 gigahertz coverage. You could have done pre-selected. Absolutely. Uh, no, no, no. Because this is a report template, I would need to specify my criteria within the template. If we were doing, yeah, there are, yeah that's right. But you see here, per AP in this project, I've iterated through, and I've now got this document. And so how do we address this problem? I don't want all of these visualizations. I only want my APs. So to do that, we need to apply a filter to the AP loop. And again, I would now be looking at other report documents to find out, OK, here's the tags, and this is where I need to put them. Uh, I've already prepared this one. It's in here. And we'll see that we've gone loop start type floors, because we know that the AP loop needs to be within that. We're going to do Type APs, filter, include, owner my APs. We go back to our project, and we'll just double check that they are correct. 
So the APs that I want are in the my AP group, and everything else is not. So let's let's run this. Let's run this one. It should not take should not take too long. <clears throat> I think we're on to number five now. Open this one, generate report. And just while this is going on, uh, insert filler here. I was presenting to a group of people who, want, who were interested in this as a feature, and I was lamenting how I didn't think it was so useful on this particular project that I was involved with, showing the customer individual AP heat maps. And uh, I was put in my place when one guy stood up and was like, yeah, but we've installed lots of APs into our warehouse. We were not the guys installing them. And a per AP heat map is exactly what we want so that we can look at whether any of the APs have got any obvious problems with their, with their antenna installation. So antennas that weren't fully uh, in installed correctly, that would be visible from the coverage area on a per AP basis. So the thing that I like, I've always liked about the report templates is that flexibility. And I think at the moment, the thing that comes with that flexibility is its lack of user friendliness. You have to get in there and start tinkering around with it. But I'm not sure if we can have one without the other or whether it then becomes a compromise. So here's my, here's my new output and you'll see that we've now got an eight we've now got a visualization per page and why has that happened and that's because I also put in a page break before the loop end type APs and type n uh, loop end type floors so this is this is this is sort of sort of taking shape now we have the APs but have a little bit more information so the next thing I want to add to this is the AP name at the top of the visualization. And again, I would open the one-click report template, grab the text that I need, and add it to my template. OK, everybody happy with what I'm doing here? I've added this tag for AP name. Again, we would run this template through. And now we will get the AP name at the top of that. But next, I want to put the AP icon onto my visualization. And again, that can be done by just adding one line into my visualization text, which will be this one here. And this time, I've just added within, under visualization, APs. And the reason that this one will work like this is that if we were looking at a, a visualization with lots of APs, then I would open up the APs uh, parent level and start describing the filters of, I only want to see my APs, or I only want to see 2.4 gig APs. And that will then control which APs are shown on the map. We're not necessarily affecting the coverage visualization. That is done down here under heat map, filter, include, okay? So again, we run this template through and we will end up with this document. So now we have got the, the AP spot. And again, if we want to show the AP names or we want to show the AP antennas, if we're dealing with a simulation project, you can add those tags. All right. So hopefully, hopefully that's sort of broken anybody's fear of just, it's not, it's not difficult. You've got to play with it. And I spend a lot of time looking at it going with the error up there and say, well, why? Why is it not working? And then we'll find out that I've actually put APs at the wrong level within the tags and all of this. But just you, there's a lot of flexibility in here, which I think is powerful. Then <clears throat> one, of the, one of the templates that are in that folder is the small AP coverage maps. And I've, there's a little small explanation here. So this visualization is going to give you small AP coverage maps. And this, again, I didn't write this. I borrowed this from one of the pre-existing example report templates. And this will give you smaller visualizations of per AP heat maps. And you can see here width in millis. So this visualization is now being restricted to, to seven centimeters wide. I think I, have, I think I have run this one. And that one would give me this visualization. So we're getting that 
per AP heat map, but it's shrunk down. Is that in Word? Do you have it two columns? Yes. Yes. So to create these, this is. So that's, that's a Word feature. That's correct. Inside yes. That table you put in. Absolutely. So great question from Keith was about how did we get the two columns, and that's performed within Word. So let's have a quick look at the template again. You'll see in here that we have a. We have section. I don't know if I want to show want to show the uh, the, pay, the the paragraph markers, but you can see that we've got a section break, and then then we have two columns within Word, and that is how they're being filled up in two columns. Now, one thing you should know, and I, I've written this in here, uh, you can manually rearrange the visualizations horizontally after you run this report, and the people who have tried to do this will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, what, what, what the customer wanted was for it to go AP1, AP2, AP3, AP4, AP5, AP6. But columns don't work like that. Columns go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you want to present those in horizontal lines, you're going to need to add a page break, uh, sorry, a section break underneath, underneath each two visualizations, okay? So not, not again, not, not super convenient there, but Again, this is still a lot easier than creating those visualizations and pulling them out of Ekahau manually for each one. So that's, that's it now for the small per AP visualizations. What I, wanted, what I would like to show you next is related to a feature request that has cropped up several times, and that is how do I get a whole bunch of images out of Ekahau in one go? And, and I... I I can't quite remember what I was doing when I, just, when I stumbled across this by accident, but I found out that in Word, if you save a Word document as an HTML file, you then get a folder with all of the images within that. So there is now a report template. Again, it's in that folder. And it looks like this. And the, the, this is currently based on the one-click report in terms of the types of visualization that you're going to see. Just like any report template, you can come in here and change the order of the visualizations and change what you actually would like to look at. But this is a report template that basically will give you visualizations of survey routes and, eight, uh, survey routes and access points, signal strength in 2.4, signal strength in 5 gigahertz. Okay? So let's run this template. And we'll do it on this project file. So generate reports. <coughs> yes. Okay, and whilst this one this one runs, we'll leave that one there. <coughs> so, now is a great time. Any questions? Any questions on report templates? There are things that you can't do. All right, there are, there are certain things that I would like to be able to do within these report templates that are not possible at the moment. When you come across these, let us know. Drop an email to requests at ekal.com and describe the scenario that you're, that you're trying to achieve and uh, so that we can then understand. Yes, please. Can you take the picture, the report? Um, <clears throat> you could. Do you mean after producing the report? Yeah, so that would be something that you could do within Word. And if you wanted to do it on a, on a, on a mass scale, perhaps you could write a macro to do that. Another thing there on the topic of macros, I know that one common problem with, or one common side effect of using the CAD files is that we sometimes get the large white space around the edge. Uh, we don't have a solution pre-image export just yet. It is being worked on. It is being worked on, but there, I do have a blog article out there on writing a macro, so within Word that will crop and then resize your images after you have run that report. That will exp the the blog article will explain how to create the macro, and then the, again the problem there is that you're going to have to click on your first image, sh keyboard shortcut, run the macro, scroll down to the next one, run the macro. Okay, so. 
I couldn't find a way of doing it on all images because not all of the images in your report are visualizations. Some of them are the logo, some of them are the legend, and it will run it. It will run the same macro on all images. Here's the output from my batch export template. And what we've got now here are all of those visualizations in, a, in, in my document. I'm now going to save as. Including the legend label, yep. And we're going to save this into a, my folder over here. But this time I'm going to save it as web page. I don't think it matters whether I do filtered or not. And if we go and have a look at this, we now have the HTML file of that report document but also a folder with all of the images. So we can look at these images like this. And I was looking at this thinking there must be a better way to rename them. So what we do now, we go back to the Word document and we're gonna update the table of contents field. There are the titles of all of those images. If we copy this text, And now, now this is where the workaround starts getting a little bit deep, dark down the rabbit hole. Uh, we copy that text, and then we're going to fire up Name Mangler, or whichever batch renaming tool you like to use. We will also fire up Excel and drop those, uh, drop those image names into an Excel document. And we need to save that one as a CSV, OK? No, no, this is not a shortcut, it's a workaround. <laughs> I'm saying create a shortcut. Okay. An automator task. So we'll save this one as a CSV file. And then back in Name Mangler, we can grab those images, drop them into Name Mangler. And then the, the, what I've built here is it just will remove the first six characters of our image names. And then we're going to import an arbitrary, ter, uh, arbit arbitrary sequence, which is the CSV file. OK. Then we hit re batch rename. And if I've done this right, we, ha we should have a folder full of image files. <laughs> They should match up with what? So we've got 2.4 signal strength, and then we have the legend, and then we have the 5 gig signal strength, and then the 2.4 gigahertz signal to noise ratio. So just to, just to demonstrate a way that you might be able to batch export those visualizations from Echohow, depending on your workflow. And that's the thing, right? Or everybody's workflow and how they want to use this tool is different. Just want to highlight some of the ways that you can get around this. Or we could just get Absolutely, absolutely. That would be great, also. <laughs> if you ran the one click and yes, yeah, you would also, if you ran the one click report and saved that output as an HTML file, yes, you would then get a folder full of, of, of those images. The, the odd thing is that the way Word turns a Word document into an HTML file, if you've got duplicate images, which happens when your legend is the same for two visualizations, you'll only get that once. So, because of course, as a, as a web page, it wants to save space. So a lot of these you've been doing are kind of word apps. What, is, what references or resources are from the word stuff? Yeah, uh, just Googling, really. Uh, I've, it, so Keith was just saying there that a lot of the, lot of the shortcut or the workarounds here are being actually done in Word rather than in Echohel. And often I just find myself trying to do a particular task in Word and thinking there must be a better way to do this. And then an hour and a half later after pounding the keyboard, asking Google the same question in 50 or 60 different ways, hopefully I found an article of someone describing what they were trying to achieve, and then I can uh, cobble that into the uh, cobble that into a solution for me over here. 
So I have a, a few more slides. How are we doing for time? Are we, we're good? Any, any other questions on, yes? When will we be able to run a template file through Ekahow, get the generated report, and then rerun that report through if we need to change the visualization from a minus 70 to a minus 65? Oh, you mean? Do you mean define the threshold within the? I, I want. I want to actually get a custom report out of that account. Yeah. Put all my custom verbiage, which is what yep, yep. the customer is buying from me, and then the customer comes back and says, "Oh no, we want to see it. At, see the visualizations at some other threshold." I don't want to have to redo the document. I want to be able to import that back into Ekahel. So instead of you erasing the tags, I want you to treat the tags like a, doc, a document property tag where you can just Alt F9 to show and update the toggle fields. Uh, the true answer would be I have no idea. Uh, there, there is, we, we will address the scenario of being able to specify the thresholds within yeah, but that's that. Still, that still requires you to have it on the first go around and not have yeah. the customers change your mind. I, yeah, 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 I hear you. Uh, I don't know the answer to your question, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody, anyone else? Any other? Can you Any other? Oh, do you just mean the text oh, value? Yeah. No, you mean, oh, but if you want, if you want to change. Oh, so you, have to the you have to rerun the entire report again, and then either copy paste images over or copy paste your words over. Yeah. And words matter, so. Sure, sure. No, we're good? Okay, and I've got another, have I got 10 more minutes? We're up to the half hour. So in that case, what I would like to show you, and the next, what, I, what I'll show you now will be, uh, if you do this yourself and you corrupt your Ekahel project file, that's on you. So what I'm gonna show you now is not officially supported. So you, you, won't, find, you won't find this on the Ekahel website on how to do it. But one, one query came up recently about bulk renaming the APs inside your Ekahel project. Now, I know Jake has touched on this probably with, with more depth and would be able to iterate. Uh, I can't do that at the moment. I need to take Jake's class. But uh, I, what we can do though is if you wanted to remove text from your AP names, so say you want to remove that prefix of Cisco or Ruckus from the AP name, then you would be able to crack the Ekahel project file open and then with a text editor strip out that information. So would you like to see how to do that? Okay. So then for this one, we will go into um, resources, project files, and outdoor. This one here. So this time round, we'll keep it, we'll keep it fictitious. Uh, we have our project file, and this time I've not renamed the APs, AP1, AP2, AP3. They are as they appeared during the survey. We can just double check that. Open from the desktop. This one here. So in this, in this invite for this demonstration, it was just I wanted to remove remove the name Ruckus Wireless from these APs because that's what they were detected as. And what we would do on this one is duplicate your project file. Don't do it on the original. And like I say, if this, you stand a good chance of corrupting your data, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna rename this file as .zip. And we're gonna unzip it. And now we can get into the inside of the project file. And we're gonna go into Can I do this with a survey or do I? Do 
project. I can do, Jake, I can do this one on project.xml. Project .xml. <laughs> so I recently did this then on, must have been the simulation project. And then we would open up this file here in a text editor. And then if we do a search in here for ruckus, and then, yeah, so my, this, this demo is not gonna work. <laughs> no, or it's just on the AP notes. You're in an 8.7 or the, the previous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 8.7 files. So okay. But so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to show this one. Um, <laughs> but just. For the advanced second health class, if you want to learn health. Yeah, absolutely. But just to show again that you can break these files open. <laughs> you can get in there and you can modify some of the data if you want to, especially with AP names. Okay. That. Any risk if you just change the name? Yeah, there's, I mean, it's very, very low risk, but of course, if in that batch rename that you do, you ch something else gets changed, then yeah, then you stand a chance of damaging, damaging the integrity of the data. So this is absolutely at your own risk. So proceed with caution, and uh, I don't recommend, <laughs> don't recommend doing it on, um, you know, on, on very important projects, or especially not the first time, okay? So the last thing was, where can you go to find out more on this topic or other topics related to Wekahow? So can you work out what that, that means? Canadians in here should know. This is from the Wide Mouth Mickeys. No? It's uh, check out my blog. Okay. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. Well, check out my blog, but also check out the Wekahow blog. Uh, also wanted to mention Brian Long's introductory video from Phoenix 2018. Uh, that's a fantastic starter to Echohow report templates. And uh, yeah, hit me up as well if you have any questions on report templates. Thank you very much.